So thanks for the gift that you're offering to us by being here today. And we'll right away give you the mic for you to um, say a little bit about how the path started for you and on um, bridging the subject of authenticity. So what is authenticity for you too? You know, wow. Like Where did the path start for me? That's that's an interesting question. Depends how far back we want to go. <laughs> so, so it's kind of broad, but say what, what comes to you right now to introduce a bit. Yeah, I guess in a way the path started when I was five years old, but I'm going to skip to my early... Um, what I would call my maiden years when I was first, I was about 16, 17. And so I'd been in a menstrual cycle for maybe a few years by that point. And at that point I was thinking, oh, the menstrual cycle is just a really annoying thing once a month that I have to sort of deal with all this kind of mess and that kind of thing. And I was uh, one in my youth partying and I was at this party one night um, on psychedelics and I was sitting out in this garden on the ground. There was just this little garden with, with grass and it was absolutely chucking it down with rain. There was nobody else in the garden and I just sat there having this, you know, psychedelic experience. And, and I looked down and there was this rain. I could feel every drop of rain on my body and I was kind of going right into the kind of... The, you know, the essence of water and feeling completely aligned with water. And I looked down and I was, and I had a period at the time and I looked down and my blood was just sort of flowing like this little river from my legs down onto the grass. It was just this little path of, of blood that was starting to blend with the rainwater. And I just went right in. And then I kind of took this journey and went up into my womb and I just got this complete download of the whole thing of the importance of the menstrual cycle and the power of my womb. And, you know, up until that point in my life, I'd been so lost as a young person, you know, I'd had a horrific childhood and I'd ended up just, you know, in the sort of drug scene and, and just really, really lost. And suddenly I had this anchor point of how to find my way home through connecting my menstrual cycle and having this, this, this transmission almost of to listen to this and that there was a power and a connection in my womb that I'd been ignoring and that I needed to wake up to. And if I wanted to find my way back to myself, being more connected to my womb and the rhythms of life and the rhythms of nature was the way to do it. And that, in a guess, was how I started my authentic life as a woman, because then I, I ditched all these ideas I had about, well, oh, I'm supposed to look like whoever and I'm supposed to act like whoever and all of that stuff, which just didn't feel like it fitted with me. But I didn't have anything else of how of what I could lean into, if, if, if that makes sense. So and so, let us know a little bit about you know the the subject of the menstruation and the cycles and how it helps you navigate uh, your life and yeah, what you want to share on this. Let's enter wow. the rawness of the subject right away. It's so vast. It's, I know. <laughs> I how my challenge is how to condense it into thirty minutes. <laughs> Big challenge. Yeah. So what are the key things? So the key things, I guess, to say are that the, the body of work that is around womb consciousness or what I call wombology is a vast body of work, but it's actually at root indigenous earth based spirituality. So if we go back far enough to our deep time ancestors, they all lived very closely to the earth. We didn't have modern life, yeah? So they were living very closely to the earth. They were living within the rhythms of the seasons, of the day and the night, of the times of the year, of the harvest of the food, of the weather. They were so connected to all of that because they were so immersed in it. And the woman's, a woman's body and her womb and the ovulatory cycle and the cycle of menstruation and ovulation is an exact mirror of what is going on in the web of life. It's an exact mirror of the cycles of life that we are living in and immersed in, that they were living and immersed in. And so in that way, that's why when we go back and we see these times where the goddesses, you know, the goddess sculptures were there and the, and the goddesses seem to be sort of honoured, these ancient women with these 
big pelvises and big luscious thighs and you know all that voluptuousness and gorgeousness and they understood that the women had a connection and therefore the women were like the sacred keepers of life the nurturers of life the tenders the protectors and so by women all they had to do was connect themselves to their bodies and to this rhythmical cycle because the the monthly cycle of a bleed and ovulation of course is is linked directly to the cycles of the moon it's the lunar cycle so we are that water the moon is the governor of water on earth it rises and it falls and that same cycle is happening in our wombs every 28 31 45 days of course it's very difficult for us now to be linked to the cycles of the moon because there's so many things in our life that are more dominant in the influence of our psyche and of our hormones because women often say oh should i be should i be bleeding on the dark moon and ovulating on the full moon and you know would that be what my deep time ancestors did and it may well have been and we probably bled together but in our modern world we've got artificial light we've got a gregorian calendar we don't follow the rhythms of the seasons at christmas we're out partying when actually it's a time to go deeply inward and be with death for the next rebirth so there's a lot there but so that monthly cycle is following the moon and then we've got the yearly cycle which is the solar cycle the sun cycle and that cre that's what creates the seasons and we're really lucky in the northern hemisphere because our seasons are more punctuated they're more accentuated we can really feel those seasons and so our menstrual ovulatory cycle directly mirrors a kind of an energetic imprint of the seasons so our bleed time is is like winter and the summertime is is like ovulation it's when everything is wanting to come and be birthed into life and pre-ovulation where we're coming back into life from that time of winter premenstrual when we're we're heading for a death because fertilization hasn't happened and we're not going to create life and that process of premenstrual and menstrual is where the power of authentic woman really sits but of course what have we been taught for the last 6000 years we've been taught to sit in ovulation and kind of being out in the world and being productive and being in summer and being in spring and be out there and be upbeat and be in life and and life isn't like that life is a constant process of death and rebirth every in breath every out breath so we've denied the second half of this cycle which is really where woman's power sits where her authenticity sits i'm always with this this notion that um you know in mainstream culture there's this uh you know there's this joke that goes around oh a woman who's like PMS you know she's she's going to have her period soon she's a bit bonkers <laughs> just don't really pay too much attention to her keep a wide field you know all of that because she's the line is she's not herself at this time actually what i think is more true is that she's more herself at that time than at any other time <laughs> in her cycle because the veils of that hormonal drive to be out in the world and reproduce and just coming into life and and the estrogen is rising really an estrogen is like the accommodating hormone it's what's commonly known as the accommodating hormone and it's on an evolutionary level on a survival level it's there to make sure that the women tend to life nurture life maybe put their needs aside in order to tend to the vulnerability and the nurturing of life and that's needed but once she hits menopause and estrogen drops or once she hits premenstrual and estrogen drops at that point in the cycle the accommodating hormone falls away and suddenly she's it's like she takes a truth pill where have i overridden myself in the last 14 days where have i denied myself where have i been on this overgiving program on this abandoning of myself somehow so she gets to premenstrual and the veils of illusion are pulled back and she sees her authentic truth now because we haven't been guided in how to bring that truth it doesn't always come out 
with a nice little pretty bow on it. <laughs> Would be an understatement of the century. <laughs> So I, and, and that truth, that, that power of that truth that's trying to bring her home back to holy space, back to her sacredness, back to the wisdom that exists deep in her body that, you know, we all know anytime you are fearing death or you're close to death, you know, the truth comes out. Suddenly all this stuff that you thought was oh so important, it's all stripped back. All you want to know is who you love and who loves you and how are you going to make this final rite of passage. So every month a woman gets to go on this rite of passage. She gets to go on this vision quest to cleanse and purify herself where she's been out of alignment. It's like therapy, but better because it's all through the body. It's all through her energy. It's all through the framework of earth-based spirituality because our body is the spirituality, it is the holy space. So this process of coming into the bleed is a time to enter the sacred. It's a death, it's like a holy death where she cleanses and purifies. So in the pre-menstrual time, she's preparing for the holy space, which is menstruation. So you can't enter the temple with a load of crap, you know, with dirty clothes and muddy boots and you haven't washed for a month. It's like you want to enter the temple in reverence. So it's clearing the path for her to be able to see what is really true for me. But of course, what happens in that premenstrual time, because we haven't been guided by the elders, by the women who've consciously bled through their whole life and we've not had any of that mentoring, that truth goes into the shadow, which turns into either our own inner critic, just self-persecution, like the, the level of self-hatred just becomes almost unbearable. The physical symptoms become almost unbearable, sometimes unbearable. So it can either turn in on ourselves or, depending on our, our personality type, it can turn outwards where we just become, you know, the demonic woman who's just going to cut off everybody's heads and castrate every man on earth and kill all the politicians and, you know, all of this stuff. And of course, the delivery, the energy behind what she's trying to say is usually pretty difficult to be with because it's carrying all of the pain, all of the darkness, all of the shadow but the essence of what she's trying to say is probably right on it in terms of the authenticity, in terms of her true power. But of course, what happens is the delivery is so difficult. It's like trying to climb through all the, 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 the mud that we miss the potency of what she's actually trying to point to. And it's a tragedy. So what as women we need to do is to embed ourselves into our cycle, let the cycle be the teacher, because the cycle is the teacher. If we're looking for a spiritual guide, if we're looking for our version of a Bible, if we're looking for the person who sits on a chair and tells us who we should and shouldn't be, it's all in here in our body. The cycle is the teacher, and it's the most profound spiritual teacher that we could ever want as women. You know, and we're out there looking for the answer and it's all in here, right here in our bodies. So the, the foundations of all the teachings that we work in is working with the Celtic Wheel of Life. It's working with everything that I'm just talking about. And in many indigenous cultures, they have their own version of a wheel. The most commonly known one is the American, like the medicine wheel. But the Celtic indigenous teachings of, of, of these lands, of the UK and a lot of Europe, we have the four directions and we have north, south, east and west, which is embedded in the elements, but it's rooted in the cycles of life, which is the same for all of them. But these teachings from these lands are the most buried and the most denied and the most destroyed out of all indigenous teachings across the world. So. It's quite something to, to pull them back again because there was so much oral tradition around it. There was so much information that got destroyed. And the beauty is, the beauty of it is, is that a woman's body holds those teachings 
you know, from our deep time ancestors into our future ancestors to this present moment, all those teachings are still alive in our bodies, in our wombology, in the cosmology of what's happening in our womb consciousness. So in that way, that's why I'm saying all we need to do is really listen to the rhythms of our body. And we're gonna plug ourselves back into this earth-based spirituality, which is how we get to this authenticity that you're that you're really asking and pointing to. When when we choose to live through those cycles and really be in this wisdom from what you've seen, what you've experienced, and what you've yeah seen in the women around you, what does it give access? for women like there's wisdom and there's authenticity but be even more than that what what kind of life are they able to live when they are being connected like this to this authenticity truth yes and this natural cycle so this this cycle what it that there's so many layers like when we when we create what, the wound allow which is like what the teachings are embedded in they've got many many layers so there's a whole cycle that is about wellness and self-care there's a whole level of the teachings which is about sexuality. There's a whole level of teachings which is about creativity. There's a whole layer of the teachings which is about spirituality. There's many, many layers to this. There's a whole layer of teachings around how we navigate our emotional intelligence. So first of all, first base, often women come to this work because they're struggling with their menstrual cycle. They're literally struggling. Every month I have horrific symptoms, I can't function, I don't know how to be in the world, I'm on the bed feeling like I want to die, all of that. So at the first level, it's a self-care system. It's a way in which we are being taught how to love ourselves more, how to value ourselves more, and how to take care of our basic, basic wellness. To manage our energy systems, to manage our health, like what do we eat, what don't we eat, what do we put in our bodies, to manage our, our, our fitness and our energy and how do we want to do all of that, how we manage our mental health, you know, what are the internal stories that, that pull us under in the premenstrual, like demons and, you know, take us to that, to the underworld. So it's the first base I always say is relationship to self self-care, self-awareness, self-nurturing and self-love. Once we've got that baseline in place, and that's a lifetime of tracking our cycle, and actually listening to what our bodies are saying we need. Now, of course, that's all very well in theory. And then I hear the women screaming, but I've got four kids and a job and I've got to get up at six in the morning. I can't sit around like listening to the wisdom of my bodies that, you know, which is true, <laughs> you know, that's not, you know, we, very few of us are blessed to live a life where we can really follow all of those rhythms. But it's important to hold that as, as the kind of the container of possibility and then lean into it as much as is realistically possible. So one example of this wellness that I'm talking about is that at the time of menstruation, we are going through a vision quest. We are going through a death and a rebirth. And how we bleed, how we use that time, sets the tone for the entire cycle for the rest of the month. It's like what happens at the beginning of a cycle affects how that cycle plays out. You know, how we wake up at the beginning of the day affects how our energy is throughout the whole day. If we wake up all adrenalized and stressed, it's very difficult to get our systems re-regulated again. But if we wake up relaxed and a little bit of sunshine, nice cup of tea, a little bit of meditation, it's like, you know, how the day unfolds is different. So it's the same with the cycle, how we bleed affects and determines the, the whole way in which we experience that next lunar cycle, that next ovulatory cycle. So if we do nothing else, the most important thing we can do is to bleed consciously and really give ourselves time in whatever way we can to be deliberately and consciously with that blade. And in, in the initiatory journey, which is the, the work that we do with the women, it's a, it's a deep and profound year long training. The first thing we do is teach the women how to do what I call 
the drop, which is like, how do we actually honor this death? How do we rest and rejuvenate our body? How do we listen to the wisdom that's trying to come through, that's trying to inform us of the next cycle, that is trying to point to where we were out of alignment to minimize us doing the same patterns again when we come through the next month? So even if that's as simple as taking three hours at some point during your bleed to really deliberately and consciously let yourself fall into the earth, you know, and really rest the body. And resting the body is, is what I mean by that is not watching Netflix and eating chocolate. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you know, that's great. We all need to do that. But that doesn't necessarily rest and rejuvenate the body. What that is, is crisis management because we're overwhelmed. And we're overwhelmed and actually we want to check out because we're just feeling like it's too much to be with myself. So I'm going to just going to enter another world of something on the telly. So that doesn't really truly <laughs> rest and rejuvenate us. What, what I mean by rest and rejuvenation is to take away all of those stimuluses and meet ourselves on the deepest level. So that might mean going and laying in a forest somewhere or, you know, going to a darkened room without any stimulation and really listening and asking what is in the way of me truly letting go of everything that I know and everything that I've done and everything that I think and everything that I feel in this last month and putting it on the compost and letting it be go back to the soil, letting it go back to the earth so that I can be reborn into a new version of myself that is wiser, deeper, more connected, more nourished, and all of that. So there's there's many more layers, but that's the first one. That's the primary, most important one. And, um, yeah, I love that. Uh, I really re resonate with you know the body resting and activating the womb. And my, the question that arises now is. Yes, it's, there's that potent moment in the cycle when we bleed. But throughout the cycle, we can regenerate always by coming into the tissues of the womb and connecting to Mother Earth, right? I mean, I'd, I'd just love to for you to clarify this because it's not only when we bleed. It's, it's a daily self-care um, yes. attitude that we can have. Definitely. And rebirth on a daily basis, right? Yes, yeah, so the bleed time is the most potent time that we can rejuvenate. So that's why it's so key to focus on that. Um, because what happens in that bleed time, in a way, is setting the foundation, the blueprint for what happens in that whole month. But of course, if we only do the bleed time consciously and then go, right, that's it, right, I'm back on to Superwoman <laughs> program, it's not going to work. <laughs> so, yeah. The tracking cycle every day and noticing what you're feeling and what's going on. So I often say to women to keep like a, a cycle journal. What I what I used to do, I mean, I'm menopausal now, so I don't, I don't have a, a bleed cycle, but I would have 45 Word documents in a folder on my laptop. And the first document was labeled day one, first day of the bleed. The second document was labeled day two. The third document was labeled day three and so on. And every time I was on day one of my cycle, I would go back to day, document one and I would write how I was feeling. So what am I feeling mentally? What am I feeling emotionally? What am I feeling sexually? What am I feeling spiritually? What do I want to eat? How does my energy feel? You know, everything. You can do as many layers as you want of, of different aspects. You know, lots of apps have this. And what you begin to notice is, so I would then have like hundreds of day ones on this first document. And, it, and I'd go back the next month, I'd go, I could copy and paste that. It was the same. <laughs> I could copy and paste wow. that. I could copy and paste that. So what we're looking for are the patterns. We're looking for the patterns so that we really begin to get to know ourselves and go, look at that. On day 12 is when I want to end my relationship. Every month, it's the same. You know, day 15, I want to eat chocolate. I don't really want to eat chocolate other times so much, but on day 15, I have just this compelling urge to eat chocolate. Or, you know, day five, I really, really just want to make art or be in nature. Or, you know, day 24 is when I just want to argue with everyone. Or, 
so it's it's getting you've got to get intimately in relationship and start to track the patterns and it doesn't matter how many days your cycle is because we don't all have a 28.4 day cycle you know we might have a 50 or 60 day cycle but we will always go through the four seasons. We will always go through the four stages, however long or short those different phases are. And that's what we're trying to track. So in that way, the, wisdom, the, the, the cycle becomes the teacher because it's informing us so that we can start to get ahead. I mean, I remember when I was younger, it would often be my partner who would say, what day are you on? <laughs> Because they would notice before I noticed some of the behaviors that were, I mean, I had one, one partner from many years ago. He knew the day before I was going to bleed because he would kiss me and he said, there's a particular taste in your mouth. And it was that specific. And, and he taught, and I was like, he's right. Every single time I've got this particular taste in my mouth. So the cycle, in terms of your question, how does that lived every day? It is literally being with it every single day. And there's an evolution on, like, by tracking all of this, you get to know yourself, you get to go deeper in relationship with yourself. And at one point, day one, did you see that it transformed? Like, did it evolve at one point? Or, I mean, that's just out of curiosity because can we use this tool as an evolution tool to really shed the layers of the old and shed the the conditionings and shed the, the old personalities? Ultimately, and gonna... ultimately, that's exactly what it is. It is a tool of transformation. Basically, the, the, the womb cycles of a woman are a journey into her power. So on that first bleed, it's an initiation into her power. And then through her bleeding years, it's a practicing of her power. And then in menopause, it's an alchemizing of her power. Because obviously in the practicing of her years power, she's got loads, she's got loads of energy, and it's all just kind of, and then you get to menopause and your energy starts to change. And you haven't got all of that to put out there in the world. So then you're like, I really need to alchemize my power and be really clear about where my arrows are going and how I manage my energy. So it's a process of alchemizing power. And then as we move to Crone, the final stage of our life, we simply are power. There is no separation because, you know, we're just, you know, a channel for, for light, you know, for, for, yeah, for love. So in that way, yes, it's a journey of power and what it is really, what is feminine power? What is the power that wants to come through our wombs, that tap root, that umbilical cord that is going down into the earth, that we're receiving this transmission from all the time of the cycles of the earth that moves through us? That's our power. That's where it sits. And as we as we track our cycle and as we start to notice patterns, then we can begin to make different choices. Because for me, the symptoms that we have aren't the problem. The symptoms are the teacher. The symptoms are trying to wake us up to something. And the more strong the symptoms, the more our body in her wisdom is going, pay attention to this. And it's, of course, it's the this that we're trying to track. Well, what exactly? I don't know. I've just got this horrific pain. What is it you want me to look at? You know, and it's that deep listening until eventually we kind of in our dreams or in our bleed time, we can go in, we can move along that veil onto the other side, get information, bring it back. Ah, oh, right. I'm out of alignment in my relationship. That's what's going on. I'm having sex that I don't want to have, or I'm in a job that really doesn't serve me, or I keep over pleasing and not saying no, or I, you know, all of those things. So the symptoms and everything that's happening in the body is the guidance for the transformation. Thanks so much for sharing all of this. I have one last question. Can we do it? Sure. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's really about the ovulation period because I know many women have questions around this and I know it links to sexuality, to reproduction. And I just want a few, few lines of wisdom of, you know, how can women, when they're in their bleeding cycle, when they're in ovulation, how they can use this uh, to, to, to grow and to be of service to using that energy as a channel to move forward in yes. their life and in their yes. gifts. 
Well, again, I'm going to come back to the bleed time because the, the spring of the cycle and the autumn cycle, the maiden and the menopausal woman, the high priestess, they have a relationship, as does the crone and the mother. They have a relationship. So how we bleed informs how we ovulate. There in a, there's an axis that goes from south to north, yeah, and from east to west for the other way. So how we use that energy is utterly reliant on how well we bleed. And if we bleed well, I mean, there's we, at, the, at the project here at Earth, Heart in the Forest where we are, we we offer women when they're working on the on the volunteering program we offer them time off when they bleed because we know that if we do that they know that what will come through them in the time of ovulation is far more joyful far more creative far more productive she's got far more energy because she's not limping along trying to catch up with herself from having not allowed herself to rest i absolutely no, from working with women for 30 years that, you know, rest has become a dirty word. Letting go has become a dirty word. Surrender has become a dirty word. But our effectiveness as empowered, powerful women doing creative transformational work in the world is utterly reliant on how much we allow ourselves to rest and rejuvenate. So we have to take the shame out of this whole rest and rejuvenation stuff. We have to take the shame away from, I'm only supposed to be in spring and summer all the time, and that somehow autumn and winter are something to be sort of toughed out so that I can get back to that bit as soon as possible. They are, you know, nature knows this. Winter, you know, winter knows this. Summer knows this. Summer knows that winter is needed for summer to exist and vice versa. But we are not honouring that. So I know you want me to maybe say something else that's more directly about ovulation, but the key is in the bleed. The key is absolutely in the bleed and the axis the other way because you've got the archetypes. You've got the maiden in spring. You've got the mother or the creatress in summer. You've got the high priestess in autumn and you've got the crone in winter. The high priestess is the keeper of sexuality. So the menopausal women are actually the gatekeepers of that because sexuality is now aligned with spirituality rather than aligned with the wild woman and procreation. And she needs to be guiding the maiden women so that they know how to use that sexual power in service to what they're doing in the world, in service to transformation, rather than just getting lost and not really knowing what to do with all of that. So this horizontal axis is important and this vertical axis is important. And that's why on the medicine wheel you see this cross. Because the relationship between them, if you want to heal one, you have to go to its opposite. If you want to hold one, you have to listen to the opposite. Thank you so much for sharing those, this powerful... <laughs> The, the powerful tools and yeah I'm, I'm receiving all of this um uh, yes i would keep go keep going listening to you thank you so much jules really it's beautiful for the audience what you just shared yeah thank you thank you well, well, yeah thanks we'll jump into your free gift right now which is uh, signing up for an exclusive 10 percent discount on the first session of the initiatory journey for women yeah you want to speak uh, Yes. About it. So basically, we the way the way I work is there is one program which I take women on, and I only work with forty women a year, and I take them through this initiatory process. There is nothing else that you can do; it is this one thing. But when you work with me, I only work with women who absolutely are committed and de dedicated to this work of transformation, and they get everything from me and the team for that one year but it's by application. So the first step in that application, after you've had a conversation with me and we kind of find out if this is right for you and what you need, then you have your first solo retreat with me and that is what um, you're gonna get the 10% off. And then once we've gone through that, then you are um, able to step onto the initiatory journey, which is that year -long, year long journey. And you might not, you might step off at that point. You may say it's not right for me in one way or another. And all of the whole initiatory journey happens here at Earth Heart, right in the middle of the forest. So the in that way, we're held by the cycles and we're on the land and we're living by the fire and we're in the Earth Lodge, which is this beautiful ritual space. And 
we immerse ourselves that way so we don't have to try too hard to get connected to the elements. It's like we're going to be in them. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. So there's the, um, I'm going to put the URL in the, in the, under the video in the chat box, in the box there and in the email you'll be receiving. So go ahead if you're interested. It's, uh, it's probably quite a journey. It and is. a beautiful one. <laughs> I totally feel it. <laughs> and again, uh, Jules, thanks so much uh, for everything that you brought and for everything that you're bringing to the world. It's so precious and so needed. Um, and I'm very, very touched by everything that you shared today. Uh, I really feel the, the whole truth in everything that you shared. So thanks for the journey Thank uh, you for the that you went to go through. Yeah, thank you so much. Welcome and thanks audience for being present and for journeying with all of us. There's beautiful, beautiful sharings in all this series. All right. Thanks again, Jules. Bye-bye.